Assalamu alaikum everybody and welcome to the latest episode on my YouTube channel here at Arabic with Sam. I'm Sam, your Arabic teacher from ArabicWithSam.com. So today what we're going to talk about is the GCSE exam. I mean, I've done a few videos recently, um, you know, giving some breakdowns of what the specification is. And um, I've also done a podcast a little while ago about giving some tips on your oral exam and stuff like that. And I thought it was about time that I gave my opinion really on the GCSE exam and the specification and, and the sort of stuff that you cover. And, you know, like I, I want to approach this in as balanced way as possible because... I do recommend to my clients and I do recommend to my students and and the children of my clients and my students that that they should do the GCSE in Arabic I think because it does encourage people to achieve a certain milestone it encourages you to memorize an amount of vocabulary and but but there are some shortcomings I think in it you know from from my opinion obviously having you know taught Arabic privately for quite a few years now and um, you know, tirelessly sort of slaved away trying to reach as many people who want it in the Arabic language as possible and, um, you know, trying to help as many people as I possibly can, putting free videos out like this and free podcasts and stuff and, you know, like, and, and, and having trying to, having been through the experience of trying to foster a well-rounded understanding and appreciation of the Arabic language, its cultures and its literatures, I've come to find some things that I don't really like about the GCSE. So I think you should bear these things in mind when you consider ta consider taking it. And they all pivot around the fact that in the GCSE exams, there's no vocalization. There are no vowels that you need to produce at all in the Arabic script when you're writing the Arabic language. And, and, and even in the oral exam, you don't even need to pronounce them as well. And even though this is common practice in the way the Arabic language is used now, I think it removes... Um, you know, it removes a real appreciation of the nuts and bolts of the Arabic language. And, and, and because of that, firstly, it's very, very hard to go back the other way. Like once you understand how to read and write Arabic with all of the vowels, you understand the nuts and bolts of how cases can change and stuff like that in the Arabic language, how sometimes you can drop nouns on the end of plural and dual verbs and things like that. It's very easy to make the transition from that into the lazier version or into the more like more standard everyday type of use in, in modern times. Like once you understand the more complicated and the nuts and bolts of the language, it's much easier to go that way. But but the experience that I have when people, even people who learn Aramiya before they learn Fusha, or people who do the GCSE exam before they before they encounter a curriculum like mine, like, the other transition is so difficult. Like, people have picked up bad habits. People pick up bad habits of, in their, lazier habits in their speaking, things you can get away with in Aramiya, and things you can get away with writing in the GCSE exam that, like, that hinder your, your ability to learn the real nuts and bolts of the Arabic language later on. And, and because of that, like I can teach loopholes in getting good marks in the GCSE exam all day long to my students. Like I'm, I'm going to cover one in the next video sometime later this week. Anyway, I don't know when I'll publish it, but, um, but like, because you don't have to do case endings, like you can water down the language a lot and you can end up finding some loopholes where you can achieve more marks or you can, you know, make it look like your language is a lot more, um, you know, a lot more varied and a lot more diverse than what it actually is. Um, you know, because there are no case endings, there's no vocalization, so you can, you know, you can you can sort of find loopholes in that and make it look like you know a lot more than what you do. Um, you know, I think I think that's a real shame. But I understand from the exam board's perspective, like why they do it in this way, because that is the modern usage of Arabic. And and when you look at the other GCSEs, like many of you who are watching this, maybe you've done GCSE you know, French or Spanish or whatever at school as well. And kind of the content of the Arabic language GCSE has to line up with that. Like, you know, the, the, the content in the GCSE for Spanish and French and German and other modern languages, they are modern languages. Like what I'm talking about and what I teach a lot of the time is Arabic not as a modern language, but actually as an ancient language. So, I, so actually I would maybe even suggest that the GCSE, they should do two different courses. Like I, I actually don't know if like in Hebrew you can do like a GCSE like ancient Hebrew and a modern Hebrew. I don't know if you can do that, um, you know, because I have heard of that. But but perhaps in Arabic, that would be something that, that we should consider because, you know, 100%, like I understand that, you know, the Arabic GCSE has to line up with the sort of content that you'd have in, your, in the Spanish and the French GCSEs. Like it, it has to be for modern, you know, secular use like the other G well the other languages are. But a reality that we have to face is that Arabic is not like those languages. You know, Arabic has been a pretty much constant language for a lot longer than those languages have. Like, Arabic is spoken over, I mean, I don't know, there are more dialects of Arabic than there are of any of those other languages. I was going to say sort of over a broader geographic area, but I don't think it is over a broader geographic area than maybe French or Spanish. But, um, yeah, but, 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 but either way, yeah, like like Arabic is just far broader. There's so much more literature available. It's been spoken almost, you know, like like standard Arabic has been the same for, you know, 
a thousand four hundred years so you know that needs to be considered and, and and perhaps perhaps there is need for there to be like arabic as an ancient language in which you talk about the things that i think are important like understanding the nuts and bolts of the language and everything and then to have like a you know to have like an arabic have like a modern arabic exam and that, that, that is what the modern gcse looks like just i suppose my only criticism is when people start with that like if people start with that and then they it's harder to go back, like I was saying earlier, to have an appreciation for, you know, Arabic as um, as a casive language and, um, you know, as a language in which, I mean, word order can play a huge role in the sentences and, and things like that are almost brushed under the carpet in the GCSE exam, I find. Um, yeah, especially, obviously, in reading and writing and, you know, just speaking and stuff with no case endings is, is terrifying to me, but... Um, but yeah, those are just some of my thoughts on it. Obviously, always, I'll always round off these videos asking you to let me know what you think. Um, hopefully, there are some other people out there who have done GCSE Arabic. I'd be really interested to know what you think about that. Um, and those are just my honest opinions on it, really, because a lot of people approach me and ask me if they think that they should do GCSE Arabic or if they think that is a good place to start. And, um, you know, so ho hopefully in this video, I've made those things clear, what I what I genuinely think about learning, the Ara le learning Arabic through the GCSE curriculum. And... Um, yeah and that's it we'll sign out if, if you know anyone who's interested in doing gcse arabic or has these same questions please share this video with them if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you're watching this on youtube if you're listening on the podcast on soundcloud then drop me a comment um it'd be good to hear from you guys and uh be sure to check out arabicwithsam.com assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh